Welcome to this getting started video for Shorman Math and this is Dr. Shorman and I'll be your teacher for this course and I've been a math and science teacher since around 1990. More importantly I use math daily in science and engineering applications so I've been applying math and doing research on things like these humpback whales in the background. By God's grace I'm going to help you learn how to use math too. So what we're going to cover here is the big idea in Shorman Math, and that is to learn math, you need to do math on paper, working it out, solving problems. And the three main parts of all Shorman Math courses, and this is helpful because we have five courses right now from pre-algebra through calculus, and they all have the same format, so you don't have to learn a new format every time, but they have daily lessons, they have a section review quiz, and then a quarterly exam. We'll cover those three main parts in this getting started video. So continuing on with our big idea first before we get into how to use Shorman Math. To learn math you need to do your math. And Shorman Math is designed to build fluency over time through patient practice and connecting you to your world and your creator. And a good way to think about learning math is like learning a language or playing a game. You have to memorize the rules to start with and then you practice speaking that new language or playing that new game and you have to do that a lot right you have to practice a lot you may be in algebra one right now and maybe you don't do too great at it maybe you get an eighty percent average or so but by the time you get to pre-calculus though you end up being good at math that's happened many times so practice patiently do this first pray Pray first. Ask God to give you patience, clear thinking, and joy as you do your math. Having that right attitude, that makes a massive difference when you're doing math. Do study flashcards of rules and definitions, 10 minutes max. So we have flashcard activities or we just have a list of rules and definitions you can look at too. And study those as the beginning of every day because if you don't know the rules, you can't play the game very well, right? Watch the lecture, take notes, do example problems, all the example problems, work those out, any of those examples that are presented in the lecture. Do the practice sets by solving problems on paper, and that means showing work. And doing math does also mean building fluency over time through patient practice, not expecting to learn everything immediately. Now doing math does not mean some of these things passively reading a textbook or just textbook pages for hours or watching a lecture without taking notes. Now that is a very dull and boring way to do math. It doesn't mean either to spend more than 10 minutes or so stuck on a homework problem. Practice set problems, we call those homework problems also. And it definitely doesn't mean that you're a failure if you don't understand everything perfectly right now. Some people want what's called immediate gratification. They want to understand everything perfectly right now. But really learning math, just like really learning a language or really, or really learning how to play a game well, that takes time and just a humble acceptance of mistakes and a moving on to try again and improve. So before we get started using Shorman Math, it's important to know the first 25 lessons or the first quarter in every course, that should be mostly review. Not all of it, but most of it should be review for you. If it's not, that's a red flag that you're in the wrong course. Now, because it's review, the lectures in the first quarter tend to be longer. The homework is easier, though, because it's review. And most of the time, you're going to refresh your memory pretty quickly, and the homework will be pretty fast and easy. Now, the remaining lessons, those tend to be shorter, but they're also more challenging because they're mostly new material, which is building off of your review, but it does have that additional challenge with it. So we don't have as long a lessons there. Now, let's take a look at daily lessons. When you log in and go to your course, then you should see a screen like this that'll look similar to this and you'll see your student username up there in the top right corner there there's different options to select on there we can talk about those later but it'll open on this course home page and let's just go to this section Roman numeral 2 here and 
click on that and so that brings us to this section too and notice how every lesson it has these three parts to it a reading assignment part one part two a lecture part three a practice set every single time it has those three parts every lesson that's what a lessons made of a reading assignment the video lecture which you watch and take notes on and then the practice set which is your daily homework so if you take a look at part one there the reading assignment there's some things to read there instructions for your reading assignment and you can click and read those and then like here we have lesson five rules and definitions we also have some flashcards and that is an option there you can go to these Quizlet flashcards within those flashcards you can just scroll through and you click on them you click on the bottom there to see what that definition is click the arrow to go to the next one click on the bottom see what that definition is and so on you could just move this and go to that back arrow there and that'll get us back to the section 2 page there these rules and definitions you can also click and open that and you can see the whole list of rules and definitions there as well for that particular lesson and so those are things that you want to memorize and it tells you spend about 10 minutes memorizing those and then you go and you do your lecture so you want to read the instructions there for lectures and note-taking you can print that out and then you watch this lecture five click on that and you can have that go full screen so I won't do that now but you can do that at any time and then you watch that lecture and you take notes and you want to write down titles and subtitles so subtitle for part a fraction decimal percent and then underneath that you want to make brief notes of things of key ideas problem solving tips you don't have to write everything that you see but you want to make brief notes of key ideas problem solving tips the main thing that you want to do is you want to do these example problems like example 5.1 here that's the main thing that you want to do do that problem solve whatever problem is presented there and do those if I'm writing things on the digital screen that you see there then you need to be writing them and notice you can see things come up like if you were in a classroom watching a lecture and the teacher was presenting things on a whiteboard screen or a chalkboard so you see things come up handwritten like that and it's easy to pause and rewind as you need to to go back over something as well so watch that lecture take notes on it there's a reference lesson chart which as you get farther and farther into a course you'll see that those new lessons are based off of previous lessons and it'll tell you which previous lessons you can go back and review and you can also see how a new lesson builds on previously learned concepts and then we have these textbook pages here which is just like the whole lesson in a textbook type of form and then there's also this textbook pages link which is just like a textbook style version of the lecture and that's just if you want to look at that that's why it's at the very end there but the main things for part one is spend 10 minutes max on memorizing rules and definitions part two watch that lecture and take notes on that and then part three you go to your practice set and there's an instruction sheet that you can print out just one time the same instruction sheet works for all of your lessons you print that out one time and then you want to use that that'll help you following the right steps on doing your practice set and so you click on your practice set and the e-learning campus educadium it refers to all graded activities as a quiz so somewhere you might hear it called a quiz but homework we call those practice sets the section reviews after at the end of each section we call those quizzes and then we also have quarterly exams which are graded so these the grading method is first attempt just notice that and you just click attempt quiz now and so there's your question coming up there and sometimes they're matching multiple choice short answer over here you have a navigation panel that you can easily navigate from one problem to the next and so for example let's do this problem here and this is a short answer problem notice it says type answer as a whole number no decimals so you 
start that problem. 0.25 of 80 is what number? Well, 0.25, that's 1 fourth. 1 fourth of 80 is 30. So I check that. And it says incorrect. Well, that's because the answer is 20. 1 fourth of 80 is 80 divided by 4, 20, right? So I'll say 20.0 and hit check. And I got it wrong again. Well, what did I do? Oh, I forgot to follow the rules. Type answer as a whole number, no decimal. So following the rules on the short answer problems, that's super important. So 20, just 20. Let me type that in. Correct. So I see I got that correct. And it even tells me right down here, I got 0.5 out of 1. I got half credit on that. So you get four attempts on a problem. And if you don't get it after four attempts, you get zero points on it. So then I can click this next page right here, and that'll bring me to question eight. And when I'm done, I can just go to finish attempt. And look, it gives you a summary of all of the problems. And obviously, I just did one problem here. And it tells me that I did get it correct. I didn't get full credit, but I did get it correct. And it tells me which ones are not complete yet. So I click Submit All and Finish. The system is really making sure that you are really ready to submit all and finish. So another window comes up, and you have to confirm Submit All and Finish. Then it goes to your grade. On your navigation pane, you can see all the ones you got wrong, which, of course, was a lot here since we only did one problem and only got 2.5 out of 100 points and tells you lots and lots of information here, more information than you probably would ever care to know about a problem. And look, it tells you correct answers on missed problems. It shows you those. So if you just real quick want to look at the correct answers, you can do that. Now, if you want to know more about how to solve a particular problem, there are PDF solutions, step-by-step -step solution to every problem. You click there for the PDF solutions. And then there's also video solutions, which have a video and audio explanation that goes along with the PDF solution. You can click there for that video. So you have lots of opportunity for help on a problem. After all of that, and this is what the practice set instructions say as well, if we go back to the section two page, those are right here, the ones I told you to click on. If you click on that, that'll also tell you the steps. So after all of that, if the PDF solutions, the video solutions, reviewing the problem, if, if none of that helps you, then you can email for help. And there's an email form, a link in that instruction sheet for that. Now also within a practice set, you can take a practice set again and notice it shows a, your previous attempt shows your grade there. You can reattempt it if you want to. That's a good way to study for the quarterly exam. And notice also at the top of every problem there's help links. So there's an example 5.1 link for this particular problem to kind of refresh your memory on how to fill in that type of chart right there. And that opens in a new window for you. So you can just click and go back to that. And it even has a link for the video lecture that that came from if you want to watch the lecture for that particular type of problem. So notice that little number there next to the problem, that little subscripted five. That's another reference there, just a, a faster one. If you just look at the problem, you say, oh, that's from lesson five. And if you scroll down, like to problem 15, that one has a subscript of four. So that one is from lesson four. So that's what that's telling you. And you can see it has an example 4.9 and lecture four that are linked there. So those are helpful things for you. You got lots of extra help besides just your lecture notes. Those should be helpful to you too in solving a problem. Now back to section two and that section two page, we've done those steps for a lesson, lesson five. And so notice that it's titled 538. That means lessons 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then Q2 is quiz 2. Okay? So lessons 5, 3, 8, and quiz 2, that is your section. And some people do this as a week. So in one week, they do these four lessons and a quiz. So that might be you. You might go faster than the section 2. It's a self-paced course. It doesn't matter how fast or how slow you use it. 
So after the four lessons, then there's a quiz. And so that's what we want to talk about next is that section quiz. So that section quiz, you have some study steps there and those are highly recommended that you do those, review your rules and definitions, and then solve these particular examples. So the quizzes normally are four questions, sometimes five, but typically four questions. And this is telling you what type of quiz question you're going to have. So you're not going to have one that's like example 5.1. It's going to be like example 5.4. So go back and review that type of problem. Make sure you know how to solve that type of problem. So you'll have a similar example 5.4 type of problem as your first question on the quiz. So that's what that's telling you is question one is like example 5.4. Question two is like ex something from lesson 6a and so on. And you can have your notes open, you can have reading assignments, those textbook pages, you can have that open as you do the quiz. So we also have quiz instructions. Read those as well. Print that and read that out. You just have to do that also just one time and it's the same quiz instructions for every quiz. Don't open a quiz until you're ready. If you're ready, click on it and notice the difference here in a practice set and a quiz, they have a time limit. So you have to be aware of that. You can't just start this and then you have to go to the grocery store after five minutes. It's going to run out of time on you. You have to have a 20 minute block of time to be able to take that quiz in. So if you're ready, you got that time, hit attempt quiz now. It reminds you it's timed. Extra reminder there. You can't just stop it. So Here's your questions. These, all four of them, are on the same page. You don't have to click from one page to the next. There's your time remaining over here. So you can just go through these and type out your, as an integer on short answer, always look for those instructions. Don't put 15.0 on that. And check your work. If you got it right, it'll tell you. And do that one. Oh, we didn't do that one right. So go back, study your note for, for that particular type of problem, and you should be very familiar. This is going to be super similar to something that you reviewed or something that you studied in Section 2. Solving that problem. Again, type in an answer, and oh, got that one wrong. But again, you get four tries on them. You can keep trying. I'm just not trying again because I don't want to give away all the answers. Again, when you're done, you can go finish attempt right there and that gives you a summary. You go to submit all and finish twice and again there it gives you a grade. You can review again all of that information. And so when you're done reviewing and everything you click that finish review and you could just go back to Algebra 1 there. You're done with that section. You're ready for the next section. So you just go through that whole first quarter of 25 lessons. Calculus only has 20 lessons per quarter. The other courses have 25. And then when you're done with that first quarter, finished quiz seven, you're ready to start studying for your first quarterly exam. So let's talk about how to take a quarterly exam now. Just like everything else, you have instructions for it that are provided for you. So there's study instructions there for the quarterly exam. Again, just print those one time for the whole course and keep those organized and you'll just use the same instructions every time. So every quarterly exam before you take it, there's two practice exams as well. And those are treated as practice set or homework grades. But one benefit of these is look, the grading method is highest grade, not first attempt. So that's a difference in those. And so you can take them multiple times until you get 100 on them. You take it, you miss a few problems, and then try again. But keep in mind, though, that is not the first thing that you do is just open this page and go do practice exam 1.1. There are study instructions. There are things you want to do first. Take your quizzes over again. Study things. Watch lectures in places where you need some extra help. Do things like that. Okay. Then you take practice exam 1.1. Then you take 1.2. Then, then you have another instruction sheet for the actual quarterly exam and how to 
take that exam and that should be a closed note exam you may not use your notes textbook other outside sources that's what we recommend on these is no outside resources this is where you're really proving that you know how to do these things that you've covered for that quarter show your work on a separate piece of paper live class students that's particularly important for you if you're doing the Shorman math live classes because you have to turn in your handwritten work and have that as part of your grade so people who are doing the self-paced which is most of you who are doing the self-paced version you don't have to turn that in for a grade that's only the live class students so look at the attempts two attempts allowed time limit on this and the grading method is average grade so one difference is that you don't get multiple tries so you don't get that on the practice exams either you'll see that so that's a difference on the quarterly exam is no multiple tries allowed you do get two attempts though so if you don't do super great on that first attempt or if you don't get a hundred if you get a hundred on the first attempt you don't have to do the second one but if you don't get a hundred you can correct your mistakes and you should be able to just get a hundred on the second attempt shouldn't be a problem at all so I'll just go back to the beginning here clicking on that e-learning Shorman algebra one and notice up here you can click on any of your grades anytime and so if you're doing more than one course you might click on my grades and go to individual courses if you want to go to this course algebra one click on course grades and so you see this user report open up and you see these columns grade percentage and average so let's take a look at those and so for week one quiz we have completed here a score of 10 and that percentage on a percent scale 10 out of 10 points so 10 divided by 10 times 100 is 100 percent and the average is all the students who have taken that quiz what their average is and so that's a 9.39 and so you can use that column to tell if you're a little bit above or a little bit below average and then look down here week two quiz a 2.5 so that's 25 percent and 9.5 five eight is the average there so below average on that one and so this percentage it's not super helpful if you're just looking at how your score was on an individual activity and compared to the class average so this this isn't that helpful there but when it is helpful is when you scroll down to the very bottom it gives you like a running average of your class grade on a hundred point scale so go back up here the only two things that have been completed right now are week one and week two quiz and in, in this example here and so the average of those two is 62.5 percent and so this sample student here is just a pretend student is averaging 62.5 obviously you'd want to average better than that 85 percent or higher so this gives you a running average of your grade in the course and so that's where you wanna take advantage of looking at the percentages scroll down all the way to the bottom there and take a look at that you can ignore this number at the bottom and this one at the bottom and those are not helpful at the bottom this is the one you wanna look at and just make sure that you understand that's your overall running grade on a hundred point scale and you'd like to keep that 85% or higher that would be ideal so in summary then do Shorman math like this learn new stuff practice it review it take a section quiz study all of it again and take a quarterly exam you'll keep practicing and learning though with the right attitude and the right effort you're gonna become good at math well thank you for watching this getting started take care God bless and I hope this course goes great for you